Welcome to week two of our course. In this week, we will talk uh, more about using reinforcement learning for analysis of stocks. We have talked about this topic in the last week of our course uh, on reinforcement learning. And in this previous course, we talked about how various uh, classical problems in finance, such as optimal stock trading, optimal portfolio liquidation, optimal portfolio management, and index tracking can all be solved by formulating them as, a, as problems of optimal control. And once this is done, we find ourselves in a familiar terrain. That is, uh, we can use uh, either methods of dynamic programming or reinforcement learning to solve these problems. For example, if you work in trading and want to improve your strategies uh, in any of these tasks, uh, you can try these methods. To make them work, uh, you will uh, first need data. And uh, the data you need uh, might be of different forms depending on the settings. One possible scenario arises when you actually work at the trading desk uh, so that uh, you have complete data that uh, would include portfolio positions, trades uh, done in the portfolio, and rewards received. And in addition, uh, you would need market data relevant for your portfolio. I also would like to remind you that uh, rewards in this formulation are uh, never directly absorbed, unlike uh, portfolio positions uh, or trades made. Uh, it rather has to be computed uh, from these quantities. Uh, and using parameters such as um, risk aversion parameter lambda, impact parameter mu, and so on. For this scenario, uh, we have a classical reinforcement learning task uh, when you have to find an optimal action policy from this data. A method that we discussed in our course on reinforcement learning was based on an iterative solution for a self-consistent system of three equations of G-learning. Let me remind you that uh, G-learning can be viewed as regularized Q-learning so that uh, the G function is given uh, by the Q function uh, with regularization by entropy. And respectively, the self-consistent uh, system of equations for G learning involves uh, three equations for three unknown uh, quantities, the G function, the F function, and the policy pi. And, uh, because dynamics in the presence of market impacts are nonlinear, uh, we used an iterative method to solve this system. The method performs iterative linearization of dynamics and then updates the Q function and F function uh, written as quadratic expansions around a reference value uh, of the state variable. But as we said before, uh, this setting uh, with observed states, actions, and rewards is not the only possible setting. Imagine, for example, that you have uh, historical market data and historical portfolio data made of portfolio positions and trades, uh, that is, uh, actions, but uh, you do not know uh, the rewards received. Such problem may arise even if you have portfolio trading data. Uh, but this data is obtained uh, using trading strategies that do not use mean variance Markowitz type optimization that we assumed when we set up the problem. And in such case, uh, a trader may not even know what values of risk aversion lambda the data correspond to. But even if a trader does not think in terms of maximization of uh, a risk uh, of risk adjusted returns uh, that involves uh, a risk aversion parameter lambda, traders' actions uh, can be consistent with some values of uh, lambda. However, as this uh, 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 value or values of lambda are unknown, it also means that we do not know the rewards either because rewards need to be computed from states and actions uh, by relations that depend on parameters lambda and mu. So what can we do uh, 
uh, in this case? Well, if rewards are not absorbed, then instead of reinforcement learning, we can use inverse reinforcement learning. Inverse reinforcement learning, or IRL, deals, uh, deals with problems where uh, we only observe states and actions, but not rewards. The problem of IRL is to find uh, um, the optimal, uh, the actual reward function and the optimal policy from data. And in general, there is a, it's more complex problem than the direct um, uh, reinforcement learning because now we have to find two functions rather than just uh, one function from data. However, if we deal with the parametric model, then both the policy function and a reward function are functions of the same set of variables that includes lambda, impact parameter mu, and other parameters. And in this sense, finding uh, the reward function and uh, uh, actu uh, action policy function uh, becomes uh, the same problem as both are expressed in terms of the same set of parameters. In this setting, uh, IRL becomes almost as easy or as hard as the direct reinforcement learning. And in particular, if we work with stochastic policies, as we did uh, in our uh, course on reinforcement learning, then the resulting policy uh, would be a probability distribution. Once we have it as a function of original model parameters, we can estimate uh, these parameters simply by using maximum likelihood for observed trajectories. Once these parameters are found, uh, we can compute rewards as they depend only on states, actions, and uh, model parameters. Therefore, by doing uh, maximum likelihood on observed uh, trajectories with a parametric model, we uh, also compute the reward function. And finally, one more interesting uh, problem formulation is obtained when uh, neither rewards nor actions are observed. Two main questions here are first, uh, uh, where can we have such settings? And second, how we should proceed about it. Let's first discuss uh, why such problem formulation can be interesting. I can think of at least two, problems form two problem formulations where uh, it can be of interest. The first one arises in intraday trading. If you work for a large dealer uh, whose trades uh, can substantially move the market, uh, via market impact uh, of trading, you uh, may want to know strategies uh, of your competitors. You can see market prices, but you cannot directly observe actions of your competitors. However, if you have an estimate uh, of a portfolio of your competitor and an estimate of a planning horizon of the competitor, then you can still do inference of your competitor's action policy if you treat uh, their actions as uh, unobservable or hidden variables. In this case, you can use uh, algorithms that uh, work with hidden variables to make inferences. And one such algorithm is uh, the EM algorithm that we uh, discussed several times uh, in this specialization. Another setting where we only observe states but not actions arises when we consider market uh, dynamics uh, using uh, the approach of inverse reinforcement learning. And this actually will be the topic that we will discuss in our next video.